He was the youngest kid on the field. All the other boys were in middle school. He was in third grade. Everyone else could handle a bat. He'd never been able to get a hit. And they could pitch and catch and steal bases. He had a rag arm, slow glove, and bricks for feet. All the other boys were bigger and stronger and faster. He was lacking in size and power and speed. And when it came time to pick teams, he took his place behind the others and braced for the worst. The selection process began. I get Johnny. I'll take Tommy. I want Jason. And he watched as the three boys chosen strutted and swaggered in the direction of their captains. They struck the cool kid pose to make sure everyone knew that they had been picked first. The winnowing process continued and the boy just knew that on this day, the last kid to be picked would be him. But then something miraculous happened. One of the captains looked over at him and called out his name. I take Max, he announced. <laughs> My eyes opened wide. I wondered if I'd heard correctly. After all, there were still plenty of other good players to pick, boys who were stronger and more skilled. But the one who had called my name was looking at me, motioning for me to come over to his team. You see, this older boy was my brother. And where I was weak in all things baseball, my big brother was strong. And on this day, my brother had chosen to be my powerful ally. Followers of Christ can say the same. We have been given access to the Holy Spirit. And like a big brother, he chooses to be our powerful ally. Now we learn about him through the writings of King David, Isaiah, John, Paul, and Jesus. Yet we often struggle with understanding who he is. God as a father makes sense to us. Jesus as the Son is no problem, but the Holy Spirit? The term itself seems, seems mystical and otherworldly. This is why I am so glad that you have joined me on this study, for the Holy Spirit doesn't have to be a mystery. You can understand who he is and how he works. And when you do, you will discover, as many before you have, that help is here when you need it the most. Early in my ministry as a young pastor, I tried my best to run on my own internal batteries. I thought I had an infinite supply of energy, and I was determined to study hard and counsel wisely and solve problems and organize committees and satisfy each cranky church member. I maintained my game face for three or four years, but somewhere in my mid-30s, I ran out of juice. Suddenly, I could not sleep. I would climb into bed and listen to the relaxed breathing of my wife. I would imagine my three young daughters snoozing in their beds down the hall. I would think about my friends and co-workers, each of whom were resting peacefully. Our dog was sleeping. Our goldfish was sleeping. But me, <laughs> my mind was racing like a Ferrari in a time trial. I thought of church members to call, decisions to be made, tasks to perform. On more than one Sunday morning, I stood before the church having had little to no sleep at all. This was the season in which I found the Holy Spirit, or to put it more accurately, the Holy Spirit found me. 
In those late night hours when I could not rest, I would climb out of bed and pad down the stairs and kneel at our couch to pray. My prayers were moans. My faith was frazzled. I couldn't even summon the energy to fake it. I was honest. Honest to God, I was. As it turns out, God has a soft spot for an honest prayer. And little by little, the Holy Spirit brought life to my life. I began to sense Him. He led with a kind touch. He wooed with a whisper. Was He still mysterious? By all means. But a figment of my imagination? Not at all. One day, while studying for a message, I, I read these words used by Jesus to describe the Holy Spirit. I will pray to the Father, and He shall give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever. And I recall having this wonderful realization. I know that person. Now that was three decades ago. I no longer think of the Holy Spirit as the Holy Who. Today I recognize the Holy Spirit as my ally, my champion, advocate, and guide. He is the executor of God's will, come to infuse us with strength, the one who equips us not to just get by, but to actually thrive and, and shine forth and live the abundant life that Jesus spoke about so often. This power is critical in the life of a believer. In fact, it was so important to Jesus that his disciples have this power that he did not allow them to begin their ministries until they received it. As he prepared to depart the world, he said to them, don't begin telling others yet. Stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Now by this point, the disciples had spent three years in training. They had sat with Jesus around campfires, walked with him through cities, and witnessed him banish disease and command demons. They knew his favorite food, jokes, and hangouts. They'd even seen the empty tomb and touched his resurrected body and spent 40 days listening to the resurrected Christ teach about the kingdom of God. But they were not ready. They needed more. So Jesus instructed them, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. And then he made this important promise to them. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Mark it down. The Holy Spirit comes with power. Power to make good choices, keep promises, and silence the inner voices of fear and failure. Power to get out of bed, to get on with life, to get busy about the right things in the right way. Power, power to face the unexpected and unwanted passages of time. Power. This is what Jesus promised then, and this is what he promises today. So let me ask, how is your power level? Now perhaps you have all the power you need. Life is a downhill stroll through a pleasant meadow. You never lack energy, enthusiasm, or strength. Your step has a spring to it. You are ever joyful and empowered. If that describes you, well, <laughs> you're in the wrong study. You need to join a group going through a study on honesty. No, I'm sure that you're just like the rest of us a little too dependent upon that first cup of coffee every morning and the second cup. You're tired of what seems like walking uphill all the time. It feels like you're dragging an anchor behind you and pushing a cart full of burdens ahead of you. And all too often, by the time you've limped your way to the end of the day, you wonder where you'll find the strength to make it through tomorrow. If that is a more accurate description of your state of being, I, I want to invite you to consider the possibility 
of a life-giving relationship with the Holy Spirit. No more walking this path alone. No more carrying the weight you were not intended to bear. No wandering and wondering where you are going to get the strength for the day. It's time for you to enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit and experience the vigorous life that only He can offer to you. God does not want His children to be a bunch of stressed out, worn out, done in, washed up representatives for Christ in the world. He wants us to be fresher, active, alive. The Spirit of God longs to give you this power. He wants to guide, teach, and energize you. He wants to shoulder the burdens you were never intended to carry. Challenges come with life, but they need not define your life. Help is here. And He comes with the promise of power. In the Gospel of John, we read how Jesus stood up on the last day of an important feast in Jerusalem. And He said, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. If anyone believes in me, rivers of living water will flow from that person's heart. As the scripture says, John adds, Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit. Each word of Christ is important. If anyone is thirsty, skin color does not matter. Income level is of no importance. Background checks will not be made. Every person has been extended this offer. Come to me and drink. Could Jesus' direction be any clearer? Spiritual thirst is quenched only by Christ himself. When we come to him and drink of everything he offers, living water flows out from our hearts. All that is needed is an admission of thirst. And who fails to meet that criterion? The teenager is thirsty for friends. The senior citizen is thirsty for hope. The heartbroken man is thirsty for a second chance. The shame-filled woman is thirsty for acceptance. We're all thirsty. Thirsty to be happy. Thirsty to have meaning. To have answers and strength. Thirsty for God's strength. Here's another important truth. The power of the Holy Spirit does not only apply to us as individuals. Yes, the Spirit is always there to fill us when we approach Him. But sometimes He pours out His power over entire communities, even entire nations, like torrents of water flowing across a barren land. This is what God was saying when He spoke these words through the prophet Isaiah. I will pour out water for the thirsty land and make streams flow on dry land. I will pour out my spirit into your children and my blessing on your descendants. Your children will grow like a tree in the grass, like poplar trees growing beside streams of water. Maybe you've experienced such a pouring out during a church service or a prayer time or revival message, you sense, you sense that there is something different going on. More than just an ordinary gathering, there's an electricity in the air, a palpable sense of the Spirit's presence. And not just His presence, but also His power. A power that can rush out like a raging river into the world. A power that can pour forth God's goodness, grace, and mercy on all the earth. You can be a part of this great outflowing of power, a contributor to the raging flood. You have something to offer to others who are thirsty. So many are today in our world. People are run down, drained, dying from lack of power. The sad reality is that Christianity is on the decline in our country, and the number of believers has dropped 12% in the last decade. Belief in God is down while belief in ghosts is up. Depression is continually on the rise, yet there is hope. Not because you or I are on the job, but because the Holy Spirit is here with us, around us, inside us, he is here to provide help and comfort to a hurting world. I still remember that day my brother chose me for his team. 
I tilted my head to the side and smiled an Elvis smile and swaggered through the pitiful lot of unpicked players and took my place next to my unexpected ally. In the time it took to say my name, I went from the back of the pack to the front of the line. I felt empowered and confident that I could play the game, all because my brother picked me. The New Testament has a word for such activity, encouragement. When Jesus introduced the Spirit to us, he called him the parakletos, the noun form of the very word for encouragement. When the living water of our Lord and Savior pours into our hearts, the Holy Spirit flows out of us and electrifies the dead places of the world. This is how revival happens. We drink Christ and consequently we leak life. We serve as turbines to amplify the Holy Spirit's power. Do you desire to see a new day in your life? Do you want to witness the same in your city, your state, in your country? Do you want to experience a revival in this land? Me too. So let's pray prayers like this one. God, please release living water upon and through your children and let us be sources of life and love everywhere we go. We want to be useful servants. Let the thirsty souls come and let them come to Christ and let the rivers of living water flow again. For as they do, we will witness a fresh pouring out of God's power in this world.